But the thing is this, you know, many times we pray with other people, we pray in mass and we think that, yes, we are praying. So, you know, many times what happens, like we skip our personal prayer time, right? We skip our personal prayer time because, you know, when we pray with other people, like in a gathering or with uh, someone else, like we know this is the time, so I have to go and meet in this time. So after that, I cannot, I will miss it. But sometimes personal Pretend that this is the time I will go with. Sometimes we take it very lightly. Okay, this is only between me and God. Na? So uh, I can do it after like some time. Like, you know, if not in the morning, I'll do it in the evening. Then again, when evening comes, oh, evening it's little working. So I will do it at night. Night, I'm very tired. So, you know, for this day, it's fine. Tomorrow onwards, I'll do So, like this, what we do, we skip. But you know, uh, personal prayer life brings solution. To our problems. Personal prayer life brings solution to our problems. If we see, you know, the Gospel of Matthew, let's open our Bible. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. We all know this verse, but I would like to read it once more. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. Here it says like this When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Here we are saying that God, Jesus Christ is encouraging that when you pray, what do you do? You go to your room, you shut the door and the and the Father in heaven who is in secret, who sees in secret, will reward you. So many times like we can think what it is like, you know, uh, I'm, really, I'm living in a single room flat, so, you know, others are also living there, so how will I go into a room and all of a sudden, I will tell please, Others, uh, please get out of the room because this is my prayer time and I will log in. But it's not possible. But you know, here we can understand that Jesus, He wants us to have a personal intimacy with God. You know, a personal prayer time, be it in, a, in the room or somewhere place. But the main thing is this that will be that time only between me and God. That will be the time between me and God. And I tell you that time will be so precious, so beneficial, you know, so uh, that time will, you know, bring so much of joy, that uh, time will bring so much of, you know, blessings in our life because personal prayer time is a blessed time. So we will see how personal prayer time helps us in our lives. The first thing is this, that, you know, we can, uh, personal prayer time gives solution to our personal most problem but personal prayer time gives solution to our secret most problem you know no matter how much should you say that you know my life is like an open book but still you know we will have some issues or the others we will not like to share with anyone fearing you know what people may think maybe you know i will trust someone and i will share my you know problems or whatever shortcomings you know but i cannot trust that person wholeheartedly that that person will not go and share with it, someone else, right? So there are times, you know, we say like, you know, with who I will share, but it becomes difficult to, you know, to carry that burden and move on, right? So uh, many times we, you know, we think that with who we will share, with who we will share, but we know our God is a trustworthy God. When we bring our personal problems to Him, you know, we don't have to fear that He will go and tell it to someone else, you know, He will put her in put us in shame or you know you will look down at us no our god is not of that kind you know we can pour out our heart no matter what the problem is be it a family problem be it you know a health issue or whatever you know job problem we can just pour out our heart in front of god and let him know what our problem is and the best thing is this when god gets to know what our problem is when we open our you know heart and pour out you know our heart to him and we share our problems with him. He is not such a God that after hearing our problems, he will just keep quiet, right? He is the God who acts, you know. We all know about Hannah, right? When we think about a praying woman, yesterday I went for a, you know, women's meeting and then I was sharing about Hannah. So whenever we think about the praying woman, the first name that comes to our mind is Hannah. Okay, so who, who was this Hannah? She was the wife of Elkanah and she was barren and Elkanah loved her very dearly. 
right? Elkanah loved her very dearly. So Bible says Elkanah loved her very dearly, but you know that the Elkanah's love could not take away Hannah's pain, right? Elkanah loved her very dearly, but Elkanah's love could not take away Hannah's pain and bring smile on Hannah's face. So you know Hannah used to be very sad every time she used to weep, keep on weeping because she don't have a baby. And you know, every time she's so down, she stopped eating, the Bible says. And you know, seeing this, that Hannah is so much broken, Elkanah is coming and asking, Hannah, why you are so upset? Like you are, you know, you are uh, like longing for a child. Am I not more than, uh, more, more than a child to you? Like, am I, not, am I not more precious to you like that? Like, so yes, for Hannah, Elkanah is precious, but you know, she knows the pain of being barren. Which, you know, maybe Elkanah loved her, her so dearly, but that pain, you know, she, he was, uh, he could not, he could not feel that pain that Hannah was going through, right? Right? Maybe Hannah may, tried to make him understand, like, you know, what is making her so sad? Like, what, why she is so down? Why she is weeping? But Elkanah could not, you know, feel along with Hannah, could not realize that. So Hannah, you know, she is sad. And what happens as the Bible says that Elkanah and his family, you know, they loved God. They were God-fearing family. So every year they used to go to make sacrifice to the temple of the God, Lord. So one, once it happens, you know, the whole family went to give sacrifice. And what happened? The Bible says that they finished doing all the rites and all. They finished doing all the sacrifice. And Hannah... You know, she moved away from the family. I don't know where the rest of the family was, but Hannah alone, she got into the temple of God and she started to pray, right? She started to pray. She started to pour out her heart. Uh, Bible says that, you know, no word was coming out of her mouth. You know, she was just, you know, only tears were flowing and only there was movements, you know, of her leaves. So, and Hannah was pouring out her heart. So, you know, Eri, the high priest, he thought that, you know, maybe this woman and drank, she is drunk, so she is behaving like this. So, let's see what the Bible says. First Samuel, if you have your Bible with you, you can turn, turn with me to the book of First Samuel, chapter 1, verses 30 to 15. First Samuel, chapter 1, verses 30 to 15. Here it says, like, Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her heart, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk, and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Here we are seeing that Hannah is telling that I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Maybe she she shared her problem, she shared her pain, you know, she shared her agony with others, maybe with her husband, not with her friends, but you know, no one understood that pain. And that's why she was carrying, you know, that burden. But here we see that Hannah came for prayer. She was alone praying to the Lord, pouring out, pouring out her heart, letting God know about all her troubles, about all her pains, about all her tears, about all her problems. And the word of God says when Hannah carried all her personal problems to God in prayer, you know, God touched her and, you know, she, her face, you know, it remained no more. Dark. She got up from that place happily and she ate food. So my dear friends, many times we think like with who we will share. You know, if I tell my problem to this and that, but that person can love, that person can criticize. But my dear friends, God doesn't want us to carry that burden. God wants us to say, you know, to be set free. So personal prayer time is the time when we can bring our personal most problems to God and God will definitely solve our problems. So first, what is the blessing that we gain through personal prayer that we, we can carry our secret most requests to God. We can carry our secret most requests to God. Second, what does personal prayer give us? Through personal prayer, God shows and we get to see. Through personal prayer, what God shows and we get to see. My dear friends, our God, you know, he shows, right? A God, he shows because, you know, he has kept a definite plan for 
each and every one of our life. If we are alive today, if God has kept us alive, you know, no matter how old we are, no matter what sickness we are carrying in the body, but still God has a plan for our life. Maybe, you know, we go through different kind of problems and we get struck. We, we can see with these eyes, we can see only the present, like, you know, what is happening, the sickness in our body, we can see, you know, the problems we are going through, we see, but we cannot see what God has kept ahead of us. Since we see, you know, the problems, present problems, we think, you know, that there is no way out for me. I cannot exist. I cannot leave. I cannot move on. This is the end of my life. All is like, you know, up. Now no, nothing can be done. But my dear friends, we, when we come to God, you know, when we come to his presence, you know, God shows us that what he has kept for us and uh, you know in future what what plan that god has made for our lives we know peter peter was a praying person but who peter was peter was a mere fisherman but what did god speak to him what did jesus tell him that i shall make you fishers of man that was what god had a definite plan for peter's life that you know he will reach out to many people he will set many people free he will be many people for god's kingdom so you know if you have bible if you, you can turn with me to the book of acts chapter 10 verse 9 to 16 acts chapter 9 verses acts, acts chapter 10 verses 9 to 16 Here it says like this, about noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a terrace. He saw heaven open and something like a large shed. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, get up Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and immediately the ship was taken back to heaven. Here we are seeing that Peter, he went alone up to the terrace to pray. Okay, and what God is showing, that what God is showing, Peter, that Peter has to minister among the Gentiles. Peter has to minister among the Gentiles because God is going to transform many Gentiles' life through Peter's ministry. Many times, you know, we get struck with the present situation and we cannot see what God is going to do in our lives and through our lives. So we think that, you know, you know, everything is done like all, uh, no way for me. Now I cannot move on, now I cannot see anything. But my dear friends, every time like when we come to God, you know, we will not only see the present, you know, the, without these eyes, we can see the present situation. But when we come to the presence of God, He opens our, you know, the eyes of our heart, the spiritual eye, and we can see very clearly, no matter what the what our past was, or no matter, you know, what problem we are having in this present days, but God, has kept a meaningful future for me. I'm going to do great and mighty things in God's name, in the name of Jesus. And you know, he will open doors for me. He will take me to the places where he has planned and he will be glorified through my life. And that is the reason I have to leave. I cannot say that I quit. You know, all is over. I cannot say because God has kept something for me. I can see a clear vision that God is going to do mighty works through my life. God has kept a colorful future for me. No matter, you know, through how many ups and downs I went through life, but my God is going to work wonders in my life in coming days. Because the word of God says that he has kept a plan for us and his plan is always for good. Many times, my dear friends, we quit because we cannot see what God has kept for us. My dear friends, maybe the present situation when you and me, we see, we think, God, I cannot. God, I cannot. This evening, God is calling that you come to my presence, my child, and I will show you what I have kept for you. I have to show you so many things, good things that I have kept for your life. The only thing is this, that you need to come to my presence. You need to communicate to me. You know, you need to look up to me, and I will 
will show you. So what is the first blessed thing that we have? We get through personal prayer. First, through personal prayer, we can carry our secret, secret most problem or secret most request to God in prayer. Second is this: through personal prayer, God shows and we get it to see. The third thing is this: through personal prayer, God speaks and we get to hear. God speaks and we get to hear. You know. Um, Yesterday, after many days, I was interpreting for a pastor. I went for a women's fellowship. So, you know, the pastor was speaking and uh, like I was interpreting. Uh, she was speaking in English and I was interpreting in Bengali. So, what happened, you know, it was it started to rain very heavily. So, you know, uh, that noise was coming from outside. So, as soon as so it started to rain, you know, I had to, it's, when, uh, like, you know, many times I had to stop and say, pardon me, like, can you repeat once more? Because why? Because of the rain sound, I, I was not hearing properly what she what the pastor was speaking. So similarly, it happens, you know, many times God, you know, He wants to speak to us, He wants to direct us, but we don't get to hear because you know we are always like you know staying among the crowd, we are not having any personal time with him, and that, that's why we say, Oh, I'm struck in such a big problem. I have this problem, I have that problem. Who is there to show me a way? I don't know. My mind is not working. My dear friends, Bible says a Jesus, a God, his name is wonderful counselor. You know, he guided, he, he guides us, he directs us, he counsels us. Our God is such a mute God that he will keep quiet. He has so many things to speak to us. You know, even he speaks. We can see, you know, the closed doors also get open. We see, you know, the red sea, you know, getting parted. We see that way is being made through the jungle because of God, you know, he directs us. But many times we don't get to hear because we don't come to his presence. You know, we love to be with the crowd, but God wants us to come to him where we can spend personal time with him. Only me and my God and no one is if we all know Moses was a praying man right Moses used to pray you know he used to leave all the Israelites down and he used to climb up to Mount Sinai to speak to God okay so you know what how God was using Moses God chose Moses to say you know to bring the Israelites out of Egypt and take them to the land of Canaan because Israelites were having so much a problem in the land of Egypt but what happened? This poor Moses, he was he you know he obeyed God and he did whatever God said, and he took out his people uh, out of the Egypt, and these people only started to give so much of trouble to Moses. On the way, they, as they were traveling through wilderness, they started murmuring. You know, at least we were getting good food in Egypt, but see, here in the wilderness, no food, uh, nothing to eat. At least there we were eating meat. Now from here, in this wilderness, from where we will get meat. So every time these people, they were, you know, they kept on giving trouble to this poor Moses who did no harm to them. Right? So as it so happened, you know, Exodus chapter 70, there, from verses 1 to 7, there it says that now these people started to murmur against Moses and against God. They said, where you are taking Moses, you are just killing us because there is no water in this desert and we are about to die. So see just the problem that Moses is facing. These people are giving trouble and they are, you know, walking, passing through the wilderness and definitely there was no water. Right? So Moses cried out to God. God, Moses prayed, God, now you tell me what I can do. And when Moses was speaking to God, it was not only that Moses was speaking to God, but Moses could hear that God is speaking to him. God is directing him. God is saying, hey Moses, why are you worried? You have a staff in your hand, right? And you, yeah, you know, you did so many wonders, like I performed so many wonders through your this staff. So you use the staff. You go ahead, you, what do you do? You move ahead and you know, there will be a see, mountain rock will be there. So I will be there, what do you do? You go and strike and water will come out of it. Right? So, in midst of bitterness, God spoke to Moses and gave him the solution. 
Many times, my dear friends, when problems, you know, comes on our way, we get struck with so many problems, like we are entangled with so many problems and our mind doesn't work. The best thing to do is to come before the presence of God and tell him about all our problems. And as I told, our God is not a mute God, that after hearing to your problem and my problem, he will keep quiet. He will counsel us wonderfully. He will show us the way. And you know, God's ways, what God shows will never ever fail. So what is the first thing that personal prayer blesses us with? That we can carry our personal problem, perfect most the problem to God in prayer. Second is what through personal prayer God shows us and we get to see. Third, through personal prayer God speaks and we get to hear. And fourth is this, when we come you know to God's presence where only God and me God touches us. That special touch, right? There are so many kinds of touch, right? But if you want to experience special touch, you need to have a personal time with God. See, in any relationship, right? If you want to have a special touch, you have to be in personal time. So similarly with God, if you want to experience God's special touch in your life, it is very important that you spend personal prayer time in God's presence. My dear friends, many times, like you know, we just wait for a touch, like, right? A touch means so much, right? A touch means so much. My dear friends, maybe, you know, there are times we go through, you know, like, maybe we look for someone, we don't want that person to come and give us some money in our hand or, you know, to give us something, but we just want that person to extend his hand, you know, or to give the shoulder, right? So, God's touch, if you, if you and me, we want to experience that special touch of God, it is very important that we spend personal prayer time in God's presence. We all know, you know, Daniel, right? Daniel was a very prayerful person in the Bible. And Bible says that every day, you know, three times he used to pray, right? Every time, he, three times, he, every day, three times he used to pray. So Daniel was a prayerful man. But in the book of Daniel, if you see in chapter 10, verses 10 to 12, then you can see, you know, after seeing a vision, Daniel, you know, he was feeling very weak. So, and, you know, he kept on praying. And while he was praying, you know, he felt that someone touched him. And he got back his friend and he stood up. My dear friend, maybe there are times we feel weak. We feel hopeless, we feel so down, we feel that there is no way out for us. But I can tell you, even in that situation, only one single touch of God can take away all our problems, can take away all our worries, can take away all our pains. The only thing that we need to do is that we allow God to touch Him. To touch him. My dear friends, I can tell you that every time, you know, when we come to God in his presence, you know, and only me and God and no one else is there, we can feel his touch. We can feel his touch, my friend, because, you know, our God is a loving God. You know, what God says, you know, that he is a God who embraces us. He is a God who cares for us. So the God who loves us so much, the God who cares for us so much, how can he remain far from us without touching us. Right? But many times we don't feel his touch because we don't allow him to touch us. We don't come to his presence. But this evening, if you and me, we want to experience that special touch in our life, the touch that takes away all our problems, the touch that takes away all our worries, the touch that takes away all our pains, the touch that takes away all our troubles, we need to come to the presence of God, you know, and have a personal prayer life. So what is the thing? Again, we will look back. The personal prayer life helps us to bring our secret most problem which we cannot share with anyone. We can bring to God in prayer. Second is this. When we, you know, we find, we find no way out. We think, you know, all is over. So God shows us what he has kept for us. Third is this. That God speaks to us. We can hear his voice. You know, exclusive suggestions. Right? When we need to speak to someone exclusively, you know, something makes you able to, hey, come, come aside. This I cannot tell in front of everyone. So if you want to get that exclusive suggestion from God, it is very necessary that you spend a long time with Him. And then, is this fourth one is this, God 
touches God's special touch. If you want to experience the special touch of God, it's very important that we spend a very personal time with God. And the fifth one is this, you know, personal prayer life gets you back what you lost. Personal prayer life gets you back what you lost, you know. And we were having this 14 days of fasting prayer and one day Pastor Mark was uh, leading, you know, worship and he was singing one in this song. There one line is there like this Vacha Tune, Jo Musse Kya Sapkuch Tune, Lotta Bia. Like you gave me back everything. So I was thinking, you know, these two lines touched me, you know, like, and I was thinking, yes, you know, like I was also about to lose so many things in life. The enemy, you know, thought of robbing, taking out so many blessings from my life. But my God, He gave me back everything but how did i give that then god reminded me you know the uh, the time that i spent with him you know inside the closed door the tears that i shed in front of his presence in front of him inside the closed room that god never let it go away you know because of that you know god gave me back whatever the enemy was trying to snatch away from me you know, we all know about Eliza, right? Eliza also was a very prayerful person, right? And we know he was even a strong person because of the spirit that was in him. He was a strong person. The Bible says that Elijah himself killed, you know, the prophets of Baal, right? But, you know, uh, because of that, what happened? Now, uh, the enemy was trying to, you know, slaughter Elijah. The enemy wanted to kill Eliza. Now, Eliza is very, you know, down, feeling down. Okay, so he is feeling very worried. He is feeling very sad. You know, if you have your Bible, you can turn with me to the book of First Kings, chapter nineteen, verses three to eight. First Kings, chapter nineteen, verses three to eight, and there we can see what happened. Here it says like this: Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. When he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, shut down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals, and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by the food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached Pore, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Here we are seeing that Elijah in such a problem, okay, that, you know, he laid his servant on a midway. He, you know, now he is there in the wilderness and he is so much worried, he is so much afraid that he, you know, is sitting under a tree and he is praying to God, God, enough, enough, please God, you take my life now, I cannot bear it anymore. He's praying to God, he's praying, he's all alone praying to God that God, enough, I cannot do it anymore. I cannot, you take my life. But here's, you see, you know, he prayed and he then fell off the sea. And what happened? He regained his friends. The Eliza, the man who was asking God to take away his life, now the street, because he lost all his strength, what happened? He got back. His friend, and he was so much strengthened that he walked for forty days and forty nights, and he climbed to the Mount of Horeb. Just see the strength that God gave him back. Isn't it amazing? Many times, you know, we just give up. We think that you know, this is God means gone. This is not. This is not meant for me, my dear friends. I want to tell you, this is meant for you and you. What is yours is absolutely yours. Let not the devil just, you know, snatch it away from you. What is yours is yours, you know. We can, you know, bring it back. Maybe the devil will play, but you know, what is mine is mine. What God has blessed me with is my blessing and I will have it. My dear friend.
friends, here we see that Elijah, he lost all his friends. But when he cried out to the Lord, all alone in that wilderness, he got back that strength. My dear friends, I tell you, the prayers you pray in the presence of God, all alone, behind that closed doors, will never, ever go in vain. Will never, ever go in vain. My dear friends, might be because of business, because of work pressure or this and that, you know, our family life, you know, somewhere or the other, we pay to spend that quality time in God's presence. But my dear friends, you know, our God is a very good God. This evening, you know, if we check ourselves and if we look back, we may find that maybe, you know, we are not giving God any time. Maybe we are running away from Him. But, you know, if we check, we can find, you know, that time when we used to meet with God, the place where we used to meet God, He is still there. You know, that time God is waiting for us. That same place God has been waiting for us. My dear friends, God is still waiting for you and me. God is still waiting for you and me. Who can, who or what can be so precious to us than our God? Right? Sometimes we say that we are so busy, so much of work pressed here. You know, there is no time to pray. There is no time to meet God. But still, you know, even after hearing this much that, you know, we don't have time. We have so much of work pressure. God is still eagerly waiting for you and me that when my son will come, when my daughter will come, because I know that, you know, my son or my daughter is carrying so much of burden, which my daughter or my son cannot share with anyone else. Be 
because he loves us so much, my friend. He loves us so much, my friend. He's secretly waiting that when we will run to the throne of his grace and we cry out to him that you Father, here we are. Father, here we are. Father, here we are. Father, here we are to put out our hearts in front of you. Father, here we are because we know that you have kept a path in our lives. Father, here we are to see what you want us to show. Father, here we are to hear from you. Father, here we are to the Lord to your touch in our lives. Father, here we are that you can work in our lives. Of personal prayer time. 